Welcome to Glad Tidings Church Online. I'm Pastor Eric Revy, lead pastor of Glad Tidings Church. If you like this video, please click on the subscribe button and click the bell notification and change the notifications to all. That way you will always be notified when we upload a new video and you don't want to miss them. Also, if you'd like to support this ministry, you can do so by going to our website, gladtidingschurch.ca. Once again, thank you for joining us and may you enjoy this experience. So if you have your Bibles, we're going to turn to Revelation chapter 1, verses 1 to 7. We will read them in just a moment. Uh, but the book of Revelation, I call this uh, message, The Last Man Standing. Last Man Standing. So the book of Revelation, what does it mean and why does it matter that we study it? The study of God's word is incomplete without the book of Revelation. Because the Bible from beginning to the end is his story. It includes the history and the destiny of mankind and the promise of, of life beyond. All scripture is breathed by God. And revelation is his final word. Before we begin our study, let me address its title. It's not called Revelations. Though it may contain many prophecies in the revelation, but rather the revelation of Jesus Christ. The word revelation means uncovering or unveiling. It comes from the Greek word apocalypus. Lipis. That's a hard word to say. From which we get the more familiar word apocalypse. Apocalypse has earned its connotation of chaos, catastrophe, but in actuality it describes the fulfillment or resolution of a story. This is exactly what the book of Revelation does. This is the introduction message to the beginning of this study. It gives us the conclusion, God's perfect, perfect resolution to the problem of sin and death. While the Revelation contain, contains many complex concepts, there is a very simple premise behind the book. My wife alluded to it today. Jesus is coming again. He's coming again. I, I love the bumper videos that our staff put together. Uh, seven, like each scene is a different video put together, words put in, music put in, and just I love what they do. But part of it that says is, are you ready? So Jesus is coming back again. He is coming again. He is the Lord of life, Lord of all. He is on the throne of the universe. Jesus holds history in his hands. We need the assurance of his imminent return now more than ever because of the sense of that we see that something monumental is about to happen in our world. In his book, in the reason for my hope, Billy Graham addresses. Billy Graham addresses. And we'll get to the text in just a moment. Um, can you look up? I don't have it here. Can you look up Revelation for me? Chapter 1. I forgot to put it in my notes. Billy Graham in the reason. Yes. Billy Graham in the reason of my hope addresses a brewing storm of the change that we are experiencing at the very moment. What a time to take the news of the day in one hand and the Bible in the other and watch the unfolding of this great drama of the, of the ages come together. This is an exciting and thrilling time to be alive. 
I would not want to be alive in any other period. The apocalypse or the unveiling of the end times speaks powerfully of trouble ahead with the storm warnings that carry the booming jolt of truth. The warning is clear. Prepare to meet thy God. Follow with the voice of the gentle shepherd that says, come. If I could have that Bible text now. Revelation chapter 1, verses 1 to 7, and this is what it says. This is a revelation from Jesus Christ, which God gave to him to, uh, to show his servants the events that must soon take place. He sent an angel to, pre to present this revelation to his servant John, who faithfully reported everything he saw. This is his report of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. God blesses the ones who read, this, the, read the words of this prophecy to the church, and he blesses all who listen to its message and obey what it says, for the time is near. This is the letter from John to the seven churches in the province of Asia. Grace and peace to you from the one who is and who was always and who is still to come. The, from the sevenfold spirit before his throne and from Jesus Christ. He is the faithful witness to these things. The first to rise from the dead and the ruler of all the kings of the world. All glory to him who loves us and who has freed us from our sins by shedding his blood for for us he has made us kingdoms and priests for God of God his father all glory and power to him forever and ever amen look he comes with the clouds of heaven and everyone will see him even those who pierce him all the nations of the world will mourn for him yes amen father I pray the blessing upon your word today I thank you that we are living in this time. Father, I know the, the, the apostles of the early church would probably give their eye teeth today to be able to be alive during this time. But Father, we are alive during this time and we get to see the end time works and conclusion and unfolding of your plan of salvation. I pray you bless every hearer, every person under the sound of my voice. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. The prophecies contained in the book of Revelation will catapult us into the future. Of the thousands of prophecies throughout the Bible, half were fulfilled in the first coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Revelation contain, contains uh, countless more prophecies that will be fulfilled in the second coming of Jesus. We are about to embark on a, a miraculous mystery tour as we explore the Revelation. So fasten your seatbelts. We will walk into the unseen world of angels and demons. We will discover supernatural secrets and, re and receive a glimpse of our eternal home, which is heaven. Did you know that Revelation is the only book in the Bible that was delivered by an angel? Throughout the Revelation, the angels appear uh, on nearly every single page, and we'll learn about the great tribulation when God's wrath will fall upon the earth. We will see the outcome of the, of the world wars and global terrorism. We will observe a cataclysmic events and see the sun and the moon and the stars explode. Now, that will be scary. We will also encounter the Antichrist, and the last world dictator, along with the false prophet and the demonic hordes they command. The battle of Armageddon will be played out before us, before our eyes, and, and it will accumulate with Jesus' victorious return and the ruling reign over the new heavens and over the new earth. Jesus is coming. Are you ready? Most importantly, we will see Jesus. Throughout this series, I want us to understand this. Revelation is that of Jesus Christ. It's not about the battle about Armageddon. It's not about the Antichrist or the false prophet. It's about Jesus. He is first and foremost in all of this. The writer here is John and other disciples and Jesus. He's the last one. We read in chapter 1 that he's the last man standing, the lone survivor of the original 12 apostles. When Jesus first met John, he was a fisherman squeezing out a living on the Sea of Galilee. And Jesus approached him and said to him, drop your nets and come and follow me. In doing so, John moved from the ordinary to the extraordinary. 
That's what happens when you follow Jesus. Jesus transforms your life. You become someone brand new with a new hope and new future in him. John spent approximately three years with Jesus learning and listening, and it makes sense that, that he was used by God. So we look at the, the blessing of revelation. As I mentioned earlier in the, in the introduction, God offers a blessing to those who read it and an, an interesting to those who read it aloud. Did you notice that this blessing comes with a condition? All of God's blessings come with conditions, but this one in particular. Blessed are those who keep what is written. In other words, read it, listen to it, live it out, and you will be blessed. God gets specific here because he knows that sometimes we hear his word, but we do not take his advice. As we read Revelation together, Pay a special attention to chapters 2 and 3. I want to encourage you over the next little while just to read through the book of Revelation in which Jesus gives his final words of warning and exhortation to us, his church. If you want to know what the book of Revelation is about, look at verse 7 where it says, Behold, he is coming with the clouds and with every eye will see him, even those who pierce him, and all the tribes of the earth will wail on account of him. Even so, amen. Jesus' return in the cloud confirms the angelic announcement that was made after his ascension. In Acts chapter 1, verse 11, where it says, This Jesus was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way that you saw him go into heaven. When Jesus returns, we will see him face to face. Every one of those who believe in him, those who rejected him, those who crucify him at the cross, and those who crucify him today by their words and by their deeds, every single one will see Jesus. So why study the book of Revelation? Until Jesus returns, what is the application for today, right here, right now? I'm going to give you quickly five reasons why it is important. Number one, if you're taking notes, is to praise our living Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Revelation is all about Jesus. The book of Revelation is all about him. It's tempting to think, okay, let's get to the symbolism and to the tribulation part. Get to the antichrist part. But I want you first to see Jesus. In the midst of all the signs and all the symbols and the sensational events, don't miss Jesus. Revelation is not about the Antichrist. It's about Christ. It's not about, just about prophecy. It's about the one who prophesied. He holds humanity and his destiny in his hands. My prayer is that reading the book of Revelation will spark a greater love for Jesus and a greater longing to see him when he comes again. Scripture tells us that a crown of righteousness awaits those who love Jesus and his appearing, who long to see him face to face. Do you long to see him? Are you ready for his return? As a pastor, I encounter many people who know about Jesus. They have heard about Jesus, but they don't really know him. Sadly, some only recognize him as a person who lived long ago, or a baby in a manger at Christmas time. To others, Jesus is a great religious teacher, a moral leader, or a prophet. But I want to tell you that Jesus is Lord and Savior of every tribe, every tongue, and every nation. Secondly, to point us back to our hope in Christ. I've already told you that the Revelation is a book of hope because it points us to the eternal things that matter. When we have settled that the questions of eternity, we can begin to settle the questions of life. If you're wondering why your life is not coming together, if you're wondering why you have chaos and you have problem after problem in your life, in your life just, you just can't get it together, maybe you haven't settled the question of eternity in your heart. If you can settle the question of eternity in your heart, every other question will come into proper perspective. 
That is why we should be filled with excitement and anticipation. We should be like the early Christians who greeted one another with the words, Maranatha, the Lord is coming. The more I get to know Jesus, the more I love him. And the more I love him, the more I want to see him face to face. Revelation reminds us to set our affection on the things above, not the things here. Thirdly, to prompt us to live godly lives in a wicked generation. You don't need to be a theologian. You don't need to be a highly, highly educated person. All you need to do is have ears and eyes and a mind to know we live in a wicked and perverse world. Our study is going to be a spiritual pursuit, not an intellectual or academic pursuit. As we read, I want you to personalize God's word and apply them to your own life. Scripture tells us that everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself. I want to be ready that when Jesus comes back for his church, for his bride, I want to be ready. There is no warning. There is no no, no signal. It's going to happen in a moment in twinkling of an eye. We're going to be talking about that in chapter 4, which I title that message, Taken, the Rapture Experience. And I know that there are some that sit there and say, well, I don't agree with your eschatological uh, viewpoint. There are three views for the rapture, pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib. I'm the fourth pan-trib. Because they're all pan out in the end. I believe in pre-trib. I believe we are going to be caught before everything is unleashed and all this stuff that's happening. But the point is this. It doesn't matter what viewpoint of the timing when Jesus comes. You simply need to be watching and waiting for his return. That's the key thing. Are you ready? It should motivate us. Frankly, there are many Christians that are sitting in church today well, not right today, but in church in general, that if Christ were to come right now, they would be ashamed of the way they're living. Many would want to crawl into the pew and say, I wish somebody had told me, you're coming. Lord, I would have gotten ready. Well, I'm telling you now. Jesus is on the way. It's time to get your life right. It's time to get right with God now. I'm actually thinking uh, throughout this series, because this is how close I think the second coming of Christ is. I'm actually thinking of putting together a video and making it public and letting people know that's going to be here at the church, that when we're gone, to help them with principles and, and teaching that will help them how to live through the tribulation. That's how soon I think the rapture is going to happen. That's so soon. Fourthly, to encourage us to proclaim the whole counsel of God. Scripture gives us many warnings of the coming wrath of God. I believe in God of love, God of peace, but God is also a holy God. We try to candy coat sin, and we try to play with it so much that, that you, you almost can't tell the difference between the believers and the unbelievers. That's a problem. The coming wrath of God, the Bible, as a Bible-believing preacher, it is my job to teach the whole counsel of God, the good news and the bad news. I don't have this in my notes, but this just popped into my head. And, and it's just an illustration. It's just a story. It's not real. But I remember hearing this from an evangelist years ago. And it was the story of a man that was in hell. And as he's in hell, he's, the, the picture of this, he's going through, lifting up the bodies, looking into the face of the people that are with him, burning in hell and torment and flame, throwing the person back down, picking him up, looking him in the eyes, throwing him back down, picking him. He does this for a lengthy time until someone says, what are you doing? His comment was, I'm looking for the preacher that told me I was okay. I want you to know, if you do not know Jesus, you're not okay. You can be, but as of this moment, you're not. You need to know Jesus. I can't emphasize it enough. I can't push it. I can't drive it home enough. You need to know Jesus. He's coming back. 
If you're not ready, you are going to miss out. And if you're a believer and you're playing the fence, you're playing games and you're just trying to get along and say, well, I'll just have, I'll have my one toe in the church just enough. And, you know, when I, when I go to church and this why, how can I say this without sounding offensive? I'll just say it. Sometimes we sit there and we check off our church thing, our list, okay, check mark, I've done my duty for the week. I went to church on Sunday, check. Where it's more than just watching online. And right now that's basically all we have right now. But when we open up, you need to be here. You need to be here. Because it's the gathering. And this is great. This is awesome. I thank God we're able to do this. Because 30, 40 years ago, I don't know what we would do if we didn't have the technology we have today. Maybe we have to meet in someone's garage secretly. I don't know. But thank God we have this. But you know where the power is with the Holy Spirit? The power is in the gathering. Where two or three are gathered in your name. That's why we have this petition we want to go out. Because the power is in the gathering. When we come together, we can pray for one another. We can encourage one another. People come with a word. Come with a, 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 a message from the Holy Spirit. So when we're done with this lockdown, we get back in. You need to get your butt back in here. Can I say that? Can I say that? Well, I already said. Oh. But I will tell you what you need to know. I personally believe. I've, I've been following politics for quite a while. And I personally believe by what I see going on, and there are some good politicians, don't get me wrong. But I will go on record to say this. There are some corrupt politicians. Our nation, Canada, is ready and already being judged. That's where we come in, folks. We need to intercede for this nation. We need to turn back the hand of God against judgment. We have ungodly leaders who do everything they can to offend God and do everything that is evil in the sight of God. But one day, the full wrath of God will be poured upon an unbelieving world. The judgment will be unlike anything we've ever seen on this earth. But thanks be to God that in the midst of judgment, in the midst of, of, of damnation, there is hope in the promise of salvation to all who believe, every single one. As Pastor Adrian Rogers puts it this way, even now the raging waters of God's wrath are furiously pounding against the dam of his mercy. God is so merciful. We need to pray for our fellow citizens to repent and turn to Jesus before it's too late. Before it's too late. We need to also never back down from proclaiming the inerrant truth of God's word. We cannot water it down. It will never be watered down as long as I am, am preaching the word of God. It will never be watered down. We need to stop playing church and get serious about reaching the lost. Far too long we have the idea that the pastor and the church are here as a country club that where we hold membership and the temptation is to entertain the saints. I'm not in interested in entertaining you. I'm sorry. If that offends you, then I'm sorry. But I'm not here to entertain you. Because I don't want you to be in hell looking for me because I told you you are all right when you're not. I'm not interested in entertaining in entertainment. I want to see this church actually get serious and win the lost. I want to see this place grow, not with people coming from other churches, but I want to see this place grow with brand new comforts that we can disciple, we can see them grow and nurture and, and, and become believers. It's not my job alone. I'm here to train you to make disciples. If we're not making disciples. We're not a church. We're a club. We need to change the sign. The Apostle Paul says, knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. We know the truth. We know what's happening. We know what's going to come down the pipe. We need to be persu persuading people. You need to get right with Jesus. 
You need to come to know him. Now is the time to more aggressively and actively to the ends of the earth to fulfill the great commission, to go overcome evil with good and to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Number five, to prepare God's people for the last days. We are in the last days and Jesus is coming back so soon. I realize that some of you may be thinking, you preachers have always been talking about the last days for the past 2,000 years. Where is this Jesus? New Testament believers ask this question. Well, in 2 Peter 3, 4, where is the, the promise of his coming? Scripture tells us that Jesus is coming soon and that he's coming quickly. Revelation 1, 1 is what we read. It says, these things must soon take place. Jesus' return could happen at any time. There's no sign, there's no event there's no circumstance that has to take place in order for Jesus to come again right now. We've been living in the last days for almost 2,000 years. When Jesus Christ chooses to come, everything will unfold. Are you aware of this? That there is not a single prophecy that's left yet to be fulfilled that's stopping Jesus from coming. The only, exactly, the only thing that's stopping him from coming. And if you're a believer today and you're watching this and you're feeling uncomfortable because you've been just tampering with sin and just living a lukewarm life and you're uncomfortable, good. I'm sorry. You can turn me off, you can mute me, you can do whatever. But at least you've been told. If you're a lukewarm believer in that, you need to realize there is nothing that's stopping him from coming right now outside his mercy, outside that of his love for you to get right and to get ready. If you're not a believer today and you're thinking, oh my goodness, what did I tune, tune into? What did I stumble across? Understand this. You may be thinking, wow. And you read the book of Revelation, you read the newspaper thinking, wow, they could have been written by the same person. And you may be scared. And you read of all the, the political agendas that are coming and the laws and bills are trying to pass. And you're thinking, oh, my goodness. You might be sitting living in fear and wondering, where, where can I go? Well, I have a place you can go. Jesus. Because all these things will take place and all, and it's only going to get worse. But the reality of it is, and the good news is that if you come to Jesus, if you go to Jesus, he will give you hope, he will give you peace. And he will walk you through everything you will go through. I've been following him for almost, actually 40 years now. Man, I'm getting old. And I'll tell you, one of the reasons why I came to Jesus when I was 17 years old, because I saw my mother who had peace, who was distressed all the time, angry all the time, had a chip on her shoulder and just hated the world and was in fear and anger and misery. And, that, and I watched the Holy Spirit do a work in her heart and her life. And I looked at her and I, th I said to myself, I don't have that as a, as a 17-year-old young man. I, I don't have that, but I, I, I don't understand it, but I, I want what she's got. And that's when I rededicated my life to the Lord. And the moment I did that, the peace and the, the calmness that came over my, my heart was unbelievable. So if you're living in fear today, that fear can be gone in, in a moment. And I, I'm going to lead you in a prayer in just a moment. We're going to be closing off in a moment. But I want to lead you in a prayer that, that, that will remove all those fears from your life. If you turn your life to Jesus and you trust him, he will give you hope and peace. My prayer that this studying of the book of Revelation will prepare us and equip us for the persecution we must faith, face because of our faith in Jesus Christ. Persecution against Christians is increasing throughout the world today. You just have to turn on the news. Understand this. The government that has shut down the church is also the government that can shut down live stream. 
Think about that for a second. Then what will we do? We are living in serious, perilous times. And are you prepared for the days ahead? Are you prepared? I pray that you will be ready to stand up to the opposition and the suffering like the sons of Issachar described in 1 Chronicles 12.32 who had understanding of the times and acted accordingly. Truly, we need to be as wise as serpents and as innocent as doves. We need to have an understanding of the times that we are living in. I do. That's why I started this series on the book of Revelation. I want you to be prepared as best as you can for the days that will follow. What will happen? I have no idea. Am I concerned? Am I apprehensive? Of course I am. Just like anybody else. But in the midst of the storm, I have a peace in my heart that if I trust Jesus, he will carry me through. He's got my life, my future, my family, my church in his hands. They're not mine. They're his. And you can have that same assurance. So I want to close in prayer. First of all, if you're a believer today, I want to pray with you that God will help you <clears throat> to realize that we are living in the end times. And that you will step up to the plate. That you will step up to your responsibility as a believer, as a child of God, and you will live to the fullest potential of your destiny and the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. If you're not a believer today, I want to pray that you will invite Jesus into your life and enter into a relationship with God and allow him to become your heavenly father and allow Jesus to forgive you of your sins. That you can have that peace in your heart just like I do right now. Can we pray? So heavenly father, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, for this book of Revelation that, that gives us an insight to the times we're actually living right now. I pray, Father, for every believer, whether they're Pentecostal or Baptist or United or, or Christian Reformed or whatever denomination they are, wherever church they attend regularly, I pray that faith would rise up within their hearts. If they, are, if they have a relationship with you, I pray, Father, in Jesus' name, that you would just stir the giftings in them, that you would just stir this desire to know more of you, that you would just stir them, Father, that they would step up to the plate and be the, the child of God that you called them to be. I come against fear in their lives. I come against intimidation. Father, just let your Holy Spirit touch them in a special way. Father, I pray for those today that might be watching this and may not know you as their Savior. They've never entered into a relationship with God. So I pray for them. And if you're watching me online right now, I want you to realize that the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, and that the wages of sin is death, but that God... In Christ, while we were yet sinners, has forgiven us if we simply ask. And if you ask him and you confess him as your Lord and Savior and believe that God raised Jesus from the dead, you can be saved. I want to invite you to join with me in a prayer for that purpose. So if you're watching today online and you would like to enter into a relationship with Jesus, I want you to repeat this prayer after me by saying, Father God in heaven, I thank you that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. I admit that I am a sinner. I admit I have offended you and sinned against you. I ask you to forgive me of all of my sin. Jesus, I ask you to come into my life, into my heart. I invite you 
into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. Because right now, this moment, I confess you as my Lord and as my Savior. Fill me with the Holy Spirit and help me to follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. And Father, I pray for those that might have said that prayer. I pray that your Holy Spirit would quicken that to their hearts and to their lives. Be with them. Show them. Make yourself real to them in a very special way. And I pray this in no other name, but in Jesus' name, amen and amen. I want to thank you for joining us today. Uh, thank you for this, however long this is, allowing us the privilege and the honor of coming into your homes. We are praying. Uh, don't forget the petition. Please come in to the building here at the church and sign it. We are praying that we will be together in person again very soon. But until that time comes, thank you so much for allowing us to come into your homes. May God bless you. If you said that prayer and asked Jesus into your life, could you connect that with us? Let us know. We have online connection cards on our website. Please fill that out and send it to us. And, and we, we, we want to pray for you. And remember this, that in the midst of this storm, everything we're going through, the Holy Spirit can and will give you his peace. God bless you. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. And may he keep you in his grace and mercy until we meet again. Bye for now.